Hello, my name is Scott Tesh and I work in the City of Winston-Salem's Office of Performance and Accountability. As you know, the City requires that community agencies submit performance data when they apply for City funding. We recognize that some agencies may not be accustomed to collecting and evaluating data about their performance. This presentation is designed to help them. We're calling it Performance Measures 101 because it covers the basic tenets of performance measurement. One of my duties with the city is to help city departments create and track data about their performance. Although your agency is not part of city government, the principles we'll cover today are the same. Let's get started. In this presentation, we'll cover a few basic questions. First, what is a performance measure? There are several types of performance measures that track everything from basic output to overall program effectiveness. We'll look at three major categories of performance measures that the city uses and focus on the two types of measures that are specifically asked for in the application for city funding. Next, we'll answer the question, how are performance measures used? Performance measures are very helpful to assist in reviewing all types of programs, both in the private sector and the nonprofit and government sectors. We'll dive into a few selected examples of why they're used. Third, we'll discuss why the city asks for this information in the application process. The city is interested in maintaining accountability, so we'll talk through how the measures might be used in reviewing applications and ultimately dispersing funds. Last, we'll look at how to use the correct performance measures to build a great application. So, what is a performance measure? The textbook definition of a performance measure is a quantifiable indicator used to assess how well an organization or business is achieving its desired goals. The simpler definition is a performance measure is a way to measure and track how much you do and how well it worked. Performance measures provide an objective look at how a program or business is operating and help determine if improvements are needed. There are many types of performance measures and different sectors know them by different names. For our purposes, we'll focus on the three primary types of performance measures. First, workload measures, which indicate how much work is being done. Second, efficiency measures, which usually indicate how much money or time is used in what you're producing. And last, effectiveness measures, which indicate how well something worked compared to intent. Workload measures. Workload measures answer the question, how much work got done? In the private sector, an easy way to think about this is an assembly line. A company that produces car batteries would measure the number of batteries coming off the assembly line. The number of batteries created is a workload measure. There are also ways to count things that are not produced in a factory. We've included a few examples. If a nonprofit organization had a program to provide some type of case management, a workload measure could be the number of cases processed. This would provide information about the total workload for a program. Nonprofits that provide medical services might count the total number of patients served as a workload measure. A nonprofit that provides meals for the needy might count total number of meals served. A nonprofit providing job training skills might count the total number of hours of training provided. The idea is to quantify how much work is being done. Efficiency measures. The second type of performance measure that the city tracks for its programs is efficiency. Efficiency measures seek to answer the question, how many resources did it take to create the workload we got done? Efficiency is most often measured in time and money, or cost per unit or hours per unit. We've included a few examples below using the same types of activities as before. The nonprofit that was counting number of cases processed might use hours per case process as an efficiency measure. That would indicate how long on average it takes to review and process a case. The nonprofit providing medical or feeding services might track cost per patient or cost per meal served, respectively. This would indicate on average how much it costs to serve one patient or provide one meal. The nonprofit providing training might measure training hours provided per full-time staff equivalent position. This would indicate how many hours, on average, each trainer is providing. Efficiency measures help us look at standardized information on how well we're using our resources to produce the work that we're doing. As a note, the city application for funding does not specifically require efficiency measures, but we've included them in this presentation because you may find them helpful for evaluating your organization. Effectiveness measures. 
Effectiveness measures are often considered the most important type of performance measure, as they seek to answer the question, did we achieve the outcome we desired? Effectiveness measures should provide information on whether program goals were achieved as intended. The most effective programs are those that have measurable goals and meet their goals. Again, here are a few examples. Keep in mind that effectiveness measures can include percentages or whole numbers. The nonprofit that was processing cases might have as an effectiveness measure the number or percentage of cases successfully resolved. This would tell us how often the work is being done as expected. The nonprofit providing medical services might measure the percentage of patients fully recovered. This would indicate how often the primary treatment intervention was successful. The nonprofit providing meals might measure the change in number of clients reporting lower levels of hunger. This would require measuring hunger through a survey both before and after the program. This type of measure would show actual impact from the program measured by the reduction of hunger. The nonprofit providing job training might measure the percentage of clients finding gainful employment. This would be one measurement of how often the training provided the correct skills for a successful job candidate. Effectiveness measures are usually derived from mission statements and program goal statements. They should measure whether the program produced the intended outcome. Why use performance measures? An expert in performance management at the UNC School of Government used to pose this question. How do you know if you're winning the game if you're not keeping score? For organizations, performance measures are the way you keep score. Phrased another way, you must know how to measure success in order to know how successful you've been. There are several specific ways that we use performance measures. First, we use them to align work product to program goals and intended outcomes. If your nonprofit organization is providing medical services, you probably should be measuring health outcomes. An organization should model its performance metrics alongside its program descriptions and goals so that performance measures inform management about progress on goals. We also use performance measures to ensure that all stakeholders understand expectations and in some cases how their specific contributions affect the overall goal. Having stated performance goals allows all people involved to see the same vision and expectations. As stated earlier, performance measures are used to gauge progress. Performance measures should have targets that are guides for when success is above or below some stated level. Regular review of actual performance against the target provides opportunities to have discussions about whether strategy changes are needed. While review may happen regularly, such as weekly or monthly, organizations tend to report to outside stakeholders less often, such as quarterly or annually, like with financial disclosures for publicly traded companies. The report is an outward statement of program success or lack thereof. Finally, we can use performance metrics to compare and, when necessary, select from competing alternatives. If two organizations are providing healthcare services and one has significantly better outcomes, funding decisions might be made based on generating the better outcome. Or if two organizations create the same outcomes, but one does so for 20% lower cost, then the efficiency of that program should be recognized as the potentially better alternative. Why is the city asking for this? Now that we've discussed how performance measures can be used, let's talk about why the city is asking for them. First, knowing how you measure performance and what level of performance you expect allows everyone to better understand your goals and outcomes. Second, as we noted a minute ago, the information in the application might be used to help decision makers recommend funding. There are usually more requests than available funding, and performance measures may help in steering the allocation of funding to organizations with outcomes that are more aligned to city goals. Finally, the city is accountable for every dollar that it spends to ensure a public purpose is met and that funds are not fraudulently used. Stating how you measure performance allows the city to audit programs, if necessary, to determine whether the claimed outputs and outcomes have actually taken place. Building a better application. Now let's look at the specific requirements in the city's application process. The section on performance requires that you provide at least three performance measures. One of these, first and foremost, must measure effectiveness. You must attempt to measure what your program intends to accomplish. As shown in examples previously, 
If your organization is providing health care, you may want to report on successful treatments. Measuring the number of clients seen indicates workload, amount of work, but measuring successful treatments relays information on how well the services are working. A second measure must be a workload measure. You must measure the number of unduplicated participants served. You must include at least one more measure of your choosing, another effectiveness measure, another workload measure, or an efficiency measure to get to the minimum of three. Finally, the application requests that you fill out the goals and activity boxes for each performance measure. Application example. Let's look at the table in the application that must be filled out. This example is for an organization that provides meals to needy children. This organization has listed four performance measures. The first program goal is to have a minimum of four sites where food is being provided. The associated activities include locating the sites, getting the necessary equipment and supplies, and training appropriate staff. Last year, the program had three sites. In the current year, the program has four sites. For the next year, the year the application is being filled out for, there will be five sites. This first measure can be considered a type of workload measure. The second measure is a workload measure related to counting the number of available staff. The third measure is the required workload measure that indicates the number of unique or unduplicated participants. The final measure is the effectiveness measure for number of meals served, not just meals prepared. In the example, program success will be judged by being able to distribute at least 15,000 meals during the time period to needy children. The organization could go a step further by surveying children on how hungry they felt on average before and after the program. The reduction in hunger would also be an effectiveness measure. There is no efficiency measure in the table for this application as it is not specifically required. However, two good efficiency measures could be created for the program, cost per participant using total unique participants and cost per meal served using total meals. Building a better application, in this example, we checked all the boxes for creating a successful application. We had at least three measures. Effectiveness was measured as the number of children fed. Workload measures indicated the number of unduplicated participants. And the goals, activities, and performance data sections were completed. If you can check all of these boxes on your application, you should meet the minimum requirements for the performance section. If you have any questions or concerns or feel that you need additional assistance in developing or stating performance metrics in your application, do not hesitate to contact the City's Budget and Evaluation Office at the phone number or email address listed on the screen. I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck on your application and thank you for making a difference in our community through the services you provide.